Well, the smoke and little bit of clouds uh, certainly make things look dramatic up here. Yeah. Uh, oh man, leaf hoppers too. That's been a persistent thing this year. So crazy that that added and we're at like 800 feet elevation here. So like <clears throat> crazy that that added thousand feet literally was another almost 15 degrees. Taste something crazy. Taste semion that's shaded in the canopy, like this, which is like green, and you'll see it's like a little like green and tobacco-y. And then <clears throat> taste something that's like really ripe. Uh, and sound explosion. It's like tropical. It's really crazy. So. We're up here at uh, Monterosso Vineyard in the uh, very, very old vine Semion. Uh, this is pretty much some of the oldest Semion in the world, planted in the 1880s. Um, really, really beautiful. Dry farmed up here at about 800 feet elevation. Um, and it's always tricky to make a determination of when to pick up here. Semion tends to be a pretty late ripener for whites. Um, and it's really interesting because the fruit that is really sun exposed tastes very different than the fruit that's uh, in the interior of the canopy where it's shaded. And so, you know, we're looking at what the fruit flavors are, what the sugars are like. And then another kind of key thing is you just kind of walk into a vineyard and the vines start looking a little bit different and you'll start seeing like on a vine like this, you know, starting to drop its, what, its lower leaves or its basal leaves. Things are starting to yellow out a little bit. Um, which are just sort of like indications that I think the vine, particularly in a dry drought year like this, is just kind of telling us uh, it's pretty much coming to the end of its capacity to uh, give us much more. Um, and the flavors are really coming on beautifully here. So I think that we're quite close to calling a pick. Um, you can sort of see here as well, this little chlorosis going on, this yellowing out. Um, and it's not on every vine, but you know, it's just sort of, I don't think these vines have a lot of uh, horsepower left uh, in their engines. So um, just something we want to take into account. Um, and things taste really, really good. So I think we are, um, yeah, really quite close. But typically we would wait to do our sugars until we got back to the winery where we've got our slightly more calibrated um, digital refractometer and then we've got our pH meter. Um, but uh, I think the Semion is close and because everything's getting ripe and we've had a couple warm days, um, I have a feeling that the picking schedule is going to pick up pretty quickly. So um, if the Semion is close, I would like to talk to Brene, uh, the vineyard manager up here, sooner rather than later about getting on the schedule just so I get ahead of anybody else who wants to think about picking. Um, so basically what I've done is I've taken a berry sample, uh, crushed it up, allowed it to soak for about 10 minutes just to see if there's a, there's a little bit of riper and underripe fruit here. And then this is the old school 
the old refractometer. So this is going to give me a sugar reading if there's enough sun. 21, 22, 23.2. So, yep, that's ready. That's what I thought. Um, so, we'll, she'll go talk to Brene. Hi, you reached Brene Royal Ranch Lead at Monterosso Vineyard. I'm sorry I missed your call, but if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks and have a great day. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. You taking Labor Day off? Um, anyways, it's Morgan, give me a shout. Uh, I think the Sam is pretty close and just wanted to see what your uh, picking schedule looked like for the rest of the week. Thanks, bye. I mean, it stayed, did it stay, it was like 85 degrees at 7 o'clock last night at my house. It stayed like, warm late, but it yeah. was cool this morning. Yeah. Um, 45, 50 degrees, so very cool. nice, cool morning. <laughs> yeah. We picked um, our rosé and some zin from over there, which is, uh, I've got virus in late. Yeah. And then um, we're picking the mixed whites, which was decimated by turkeys. And yeah, then we're going to some year. upper fifth rosé and... Then tomorrow, um, hopefully you, and then Thursday, I'll probably do some more Bambino on Wednesday. Okay. And then Mike was thinking maybe Thursday for him. So if you want old vine, um, what are your thoughts on the old vines? I mean, I was thinking Thursday or Friday, I was going to go walk it again okay. today and kind of think about that. You saw the forecast is a little warmer than it was. Yeah. Um, just hopefully, just pencil us in if you can so that we sort of start. Yeah. Because otherwise we lose that spot. <clears throat> No, I'd say let's pencil for Thursday as well. Okay. Well, Mike's um, got Thursday, and I, I oh. would, I would um, recommend you try to do it on your own day, so okay. that you get the fruit, the the cool fruit. Okay. Um, um, so you're saying Wednesday? Or you Friday? can do Thursday, but Mike's already going to be first, which means we won't start on you till yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, <coughs> uh, cool. All right, that sounds good. And you can do Wednesday too. Okay. Um, I will take a look. All right. Ted, how are you doing? Great. Basking in the glow and excitement of another harvest. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I can't wait to get my feet red. So, so much excitement. So, <laughs> how, how old's the babe? Uh, 11 months. Yeah, right. So, year, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. right. You had him last year during harvest. Exactly, October 9th <laughs> last year. Uh, what a blur. Uh, I went wow, to, that's uh, crazy. I went to set up trucking for some Pinot Noir. We're poking, picking for sparkling from down on the central coast. And I called the trucker. And he's just like, how's the baby? And I was like, I talked to you last year. Like literally mm -hmm. no memory of setting up shocking in the middle of October or talking to this person or talking to him about the newborn. And I was like, wow, you really do truly just completely black out months uh, yeah. after the after when the thing is due? born. When was he due? Uh, like end of September. He was like, okay, so yeah, seven, nine you days You expected overdue, this so. to happen. Oh yeah, yeah, no, uh, my winemaker bath was very, very bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just sort of, uh, Nine and or good. I mean, actually, you know, you might as well just get it all over with. And yeah, exactly. I think so. that's actually probably hopefully oct October tenth. Most years we're going to be done, so yeah. close to done. So. Um, and then we were going to go look at Cabernet. Oh, yes. Um, I can't do it right now, but um, and I've got to get back to the winery. But uh, yeah, tomorrow. Okay. That's I'll text it. you in the morning. Okay, that sounds good. And I think we're going to do a full round of sampling there tomorrow, so I'll have a new numbers um for what that is looking like for this well no for oh, for that for, over for there that box. Gotcha. So i can let you know what the cab is looking like but obviously okay. i will i will show you where we will pick you okay sweet and i was thinking two tons is that doable i think so things are super we're picking super super light but i think we can get you two and uh we'll uh, figure out that whatever I'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow the yeah. details yeah because i deets. think that, that extra bit last year was like 1.34 or something like oh, i don't remember but look, i so. was thinking of um if we could do it, you know, going forward. Yeah, no, I, I would like that very much. So and two tons is, we have nice brand new two ton fermenter, so. Perfect. <coughs> if you have the hammer, you must use it. It's so nice <laughs> to think about actually getting fruit by volume as opposed by vineyard, yeah. where you end up getting what you get and yeah, yeah. hard to plan, am so. Am I 30% over or am I 30% under? Right, so. exactly. Beautiful, all right. all right, I'm gonna hop in here before it gets too much more.
You can have the, you get the good petite sirah. Yeah, yeah. I so you know, might, I don't know if you want to sample that or not. Or, in <clears throat> I don't know if you want to sample the petite sirah over there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go taste it. Okay, I think it's, it's always the first to get ripe, so. Yeah. Um, and then the but, pets down here, are you taking that? Yeah, the petite down here is um, spoken for, but just so you know when you're sampling. You okay. Sample that. Okay. And um, that section down there is a little heavier, but it all looks good to me. So, okay. whatever. Cool. Just want to let you know. Ready. All right. We'll do it with the old chicken on it though. Um, I'm just gonna go walk the old lines real fast. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I figured my being a little shit comment would get your attention. Like pretty much with all of our buyers, it's just been like a litany of like bad news. It's like so that block that we normally get three tons from those rows we normally get three tons from so you're getting two and a partial bins right it's so light out there um well and also it's just like it's also when people get surprised about that stuff it's like you do realize we're dealing with an agricultural commodity right it's not like it, it's, it's 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 not three tons per acre every single year whoa <laughs> You're, you should have been like, pe people People have ended up dead for saying things about the gallows like that. <laughs> yeah. Also, can you send them all the research that shows that late thinning passes pretty much don't do anything? Other than put money on the ground. It's like, if you wanted the thinning pass, do it in July. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, well, yes, client relations. I, as I say, every time I deal with a winemaker at our vineyard, winemakers suck. Um, so, <laughs> and I think the other thing too is for people that haven't harvested anything this year, they just don't have optics into the fact that everything's picking so light. So like, but you know, for those of us that have been harvesting for a while, it's like, yeah, everything, like we're like pretty happy if we're at like 60% of normal. Um, so it's just, just the nature of the beast this year, just pray, pray for rain. So. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm just finishing Old Hill now and then I'm headed back to the winery and I will talk with Cody and then I sh can get right back to you. Of course, thanks Brene, take care. All right, bye. She had a winemaker come in and the, at a block that was cropping at less than two tons per acre and being like, Why aren't, where's the green drop? Oh yeah, we're there. Yeah, um, the problem is it's so blocked, it's so Jake just sent me over the revised block map because he's changed it. Um, so one time, or one, they're there. Um, or one six there. Like, oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Everything's early this year. I yeah, know. it tastes really good though. Early and light. That's good. Yeah. They don't know exactly like what this is like and then you see people just like tailgating you cutting you off and you're like all right <laughs> running the monetary value of the fruit that you're hauling particularly with uh surefire bedrock heritage fruit it's 200 cases of bedrock heritage wine Yeah, 
And then you take the morels. Generous portion of morels. Then a little goat. A little chef. Oh yeah, look at that bubble. Well, yeah, but strangely, they didn't tell me. Dome action. Really nice one. That's another Morel one. Look how pretty that is. Look at that guy. Like the first half of it. Oh my god, there's morels and camembert melted over the top. Yeah. 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 Yeah.